Hello, my name is Matt Rabel and today I'll be showing you how to build a desktop application with Electron and authentication. This is based on a blog post that you can find on the Okta developer blog. You'll notice it here. It's got all the instructions that we'll go through today. It talks about what AppAuth is and then shows you how to build a desktop app with it. The GitHub repo that contains all the code for this is in Okta Developer, Okta App Auth JS Electron example. You'll notice it's forked from this example, and this example does have a pull request that upgrades it to use the latest versions of App Auth JS. And so I'm going to incorporate what's in this pull request in my demo today. So to begin, I have a demo.adoc, which is basically a script that I'll use to conduct this demo. So I'll start by actually grabbing this command. And since this file is written in ASCII doctor, I'm going to use the ASCII doctor plugin to render that a bit differently. And I'll go ahead and open up a command window and clone the directory. And I'll go ahead and go into there and I'll open it up in IntelliJ. And the first thing I'm going to do is update the scripts and the version dependencies in package.json. So the scripts don't actually compile everything before it runs it, so I'm just going to replace it with these ones that do. And then I'm also going to update app off to 1.2.0, which is the latest release. And then I'll move Electron, since it doesn't need to be a runtime dependency, it's just a build time dependency. And we'll make that 4.0.1, which is the latest release. And TypeScript will do as 3.2.0. And then we can run npm install. And there's this flow.ts that uses the app auth API to basically make a request, get an access token, and authenticate the user. But it has old code in it um, that doesn't work with the latest uh, app auth SDK. So this is using app auth 0.3.5, and with 1.1 and above, it actually has syntax like this that looks like client id and then client id so that's the major change i'm going to make um, a lot of these changes are already in this flow.ts from that pull request i mentioned so we can go over here look at the raw version select all and copy and paste it over here and then if we looked at the diff from that you can see that it's mostly a new module for specifying the challenge or the code challenge and then it sets up the code verifier this is part of Pixie or PKCE and then it sets out authorization request and now it uses name parameters and again code verifier and use that new code to make the token request so it's just a new API mostly or a revised API back to our script Since we already did npm install, now we can just do npm start. And this is already configured for Google, so I can click sign in. It will prompt me to use one of my Google identities. And now it's come back. If I click user info, it shows my actual avatar from Google. So that's all working. Now I'm going to add authentication with Okta. So the first thing you'll need to do is create an Okta native application. So I already have an account. If you don't have an account, you can go to developer.octa.com, click on sign up, and then you can create a free account with just a few attributes. So I'm going to enter my username and not sure what my password is. Thank God for one password. Now I can go and create a new application. It's a native application. 
we'll do electron is awesome and then for the login redirect URI we'll use localhost 8000 And then if we go back to our demo steps, we'll need to update the flow.ts with our Okta settings. So you see right here it has the open ID connect URL, client ID and redirect URI, redirect URI. So the first thing is to grab the Okta URL and this is part of it without the admin so I can go dev 737523 and then tack on to the end OAuth2 default which is the default authorization server that's created for you when you create a new account and then I'll copy the client ID and change this to localhost clean that up a bit Okay, so now if I stop and restart, when I click sign in, it'll actually go to Okta, and because I'm already signed in, it actually doesn't prompt me for anything. So if I were to sign out and sign in again, same behavior, I actually have to close my browser to get it to really sign out. So just to show you what that looks like and actually show you a login. There we go, and then I can enter my credentials. And it logs me in. However, if I click on user info, you'll see it just says welcome undefined. So let's look at the reason for that. You can go to view, toggle developer tools, and you'll notice it says hey it's trying to hit Google API's and it's a 401 well that's because they have the Google user info endpoint in here and I need to change that to Okta so if I go back here to my instructions I have it right in here um, actually it's in the blog post so scroll down and grab it right here That goes in app.ts. You'll see as they have it right here. So paste it in there, go back to our Electron app. We can hit refresh, Command R, sign in. Now, if we hit user info, well, it's still trying to go there. So we'll cancel, restart. Now try it. Ah, I know why this is happening. So it actually mentions it in my instructions that you need to include profile in the scope or it won't be allowed to actually talk to that user info endpoint. So if we go to flow.ts and we add profile and then refresh and then sign in and then hit user info. Maybe it's because it doesn't actually have a refresh token. Go to my application. Electron is awesome. Change this to allow a refresh token as well. Save it. Restart. User info. So there you go. Apparently it, it requires a refresh token. So now we're able to get the user's information. We're actually able to, to show their information, but you'll notice it doesn't have an avatar here. So to make that happen, you can modify the profile of a user and actually go in and add a picture attribute. So we'll just say it's called picture. Variable name is picture. Save it. And then we have to go back to our profile editor go to the actual application, click on mappings, and then map 
right here from user.picture. To picture, save it, apply updates now, and then if we grab a picture like this one, we can modify our user, which is Matt Rabel here, profile edit and down in the picture at the bottom we can say there it goes so put that in there and now if we go back to electron and say refresh sign in and user info we actually get an icon or an avatar with that user it's pretty cool huh so now the last thing I want to do is show you how to package it for production so you can install electron builder for that And then you'll add a build second section to package.json, as well as some scripts for packing, distributing, and post install. So for there's the build, and then up in the scripts you can add for actually packing it. and building it. And now after you've done that, we can go ahead run npm run dist. Then you can open up the dist directory and you'll see it's got a DMG in there that you can open up. And then you can click on it to run it. And looky there, it works just as before. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick and short demo of how to build a Electron app that uses OpenID Connect for authentication. The source code for this is available on Okta Developer on GitHub. My name is Matt Rabel. I'm a hick from the sticks. I grew up in the backwoods of Montana. I love Volkswagens. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on my blog on rabeldesigns.com. I work for Okta. Please don't build authentication yourselves. Use a service or a library to do it for you. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs>